Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Zakaria Ahmed Hassan, and you're watching the youth show here live at SomaliCable.tv. This show is here to help, inspire, and empower young Somali people to greatness. You can call in with your success stories, we would love to hear. Have you recently passed your GCSEs with flying colours? Have you had any university offers? We would love to hear that here at the youth show at SomaliCable.tv. Likewise, are you going through any problems that you'd like to talk about? Together, me and you and the rest of the Somali nation, we can have solutions to overcome these problems. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Zakiri Ahmed Hassan Oke, and you are watching the youth show in London here live at Somali Cable TV. Kulanti wa nasin demantina, kusu dawa the bernamish kadal niyarada, and you halida ha Zakiri Ahmed Hassan Oke. And today's main discussions are Is university a better option than an apprenticeship, or is it the other way around? And is social media activism effective to the Somali youth of today? And does the education system in the UK really help push the potential of the Somali youth academically. Today's guests are Yasin, Mohammed Mahmoud, CEO of Somali Sideways, and Saeed, CEO of Science Terminologies in Somali. Kusa the weather burn Namishka. Yasin, Hadaratun Nabilaudit. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, my name is Yasin. Uh, I graduated last year, I studied finance and banking and I recently started a uh, platform called Ahnam Production whereby we showcase videos and, 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 and content and put that stuff online so for people to view. So that's what I do. My name is Mohammed. Uh, I created the platform called Somali Sideways. Um, it's been running for about a year now um, and a lot of uh, photos from around the world have been published online. And um, yeah, I'm looking to uh, do a number of things with that project, inshallah. Um, my name is Saeed Hassan. Um, I recently graduated uh, medical engineering masters so um, I run a project I found a, a, a company called Yulen we teach with my friend Padra who is um, um, same he studied at the same university as me and part of that we teach um, what I tend to deliver is that explain scientific terminologies in Somali so um, trying to get back the, our roots in Somali uh, I understand where do you guys see yourselves in five years' time with your projects? So, Ahlam, where do you see yourself in five years? Somali Sideways, do you see it developing? Do you see it going anywhere? Um, inshallah, yeah, I mean, obviously, yeah, it's, it's, it's early days to say inshallah, but hopefully the aim is that it will develop and grow into something bigger. Yeah, and the whole point is to create mm -hmm. something that is, yeah, I mean, that the young people can relate to and yet again find a sense of belonging to. So yeah, I mean, the whole point is to create something visually that is appeasing to people. So after five years time, hopefully we should be somewhere where we can look back and say we did, and we did well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, there's a lot of things that I should be able to do in five years time. Uh, I, one of the things is um, I want to try and break off the Somali aspect of it, because mm -hmm. I, I feel that in five years' time, I would like to have gone through a lot of other ethnic minorities mm. that are standing sideways with the same concept. Huh. So hopefully that would be the, the, uh, where um, the project should be in five years. Mm. So Mine, inshallah, will be mainly about, um, so now I lay down the foundation of like the terminologies and how mm -hmm. people understand the basic terminologies in Somali. So the next move is that I want to do a scientific documentaries in Somali, full Somali, so that like stuff like physics, chemistry, biology, stuff that relevant so that people back home at least can understand in Somali the stuff that's happening mm -hmm. in the world right now. Mahmoud, one question for you. You know, um, Mahadad, you want to break off the Somali aspect of it, but do you think that will maybe like not really, you were, your main idea was to help the Somali people? when you started off, so if you break off the Somali aspect of it, maybe or drive Somali people away from your project, do you think that will maybe happen? Yeah, um, uh, well, it's, it's a bit of both because like, I don't want to focus on Somali sideways in the, for the next five years, you know, because mm -hmm. that, that's, that's not really like moving forward and be very static. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll, I hopefully like look at into other sort of um, ethnic groups. Mm -hmm. um, and to like broaden it, the sort of aspect of sideways into mm -hmm. making it more like on a world 
platform instead of a Somali thing. I mean, the Somali sideways will still be there, yeah. but I will still be doing other um, projects. I mm, understand. Um, I'll put the first question out there of the day, which was, um, do you think university um, is better than a pr an apprenticeship, or do you think it's the other way around? So you can talk about your personal experiences, maybe, um, whether university really helped you, seeing as all three of you have graduated from university. Do you think maybe going back in time, you could have done something different, tried doing an apprenticeship? And you know, what would you advise to the Somali youth out there um, to do if you were put in your situation? So if you want to start off, yes. Uh, sure, yeah. Uh, that's a tough one, online because obviously uh, universities, apprenticeships, at the end lead to the same thing, which is employment at some mm -hmm. point. Um, if you know what you want to do early on, then apprenticeship is a good way to, to grow into that market and grow into that niche. Mm -hmm. University, you explore a lot of different things, and you kind of ground your feet as well in terms of learning, learning different aspects. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, but but yeah, I think it really depends. It comes down to the individual. Uh -huh. That's that's my. Do any of you have any opinion? Um, again, partially I agree with Jesse, but partially I try to attempt to differ. If I mean, I mean, if you want to um, um, go to university and, and academically you're gifted or academically you want to really pursue a career mm -hmm. in academic, then that is the only way you have to go through. But if, for example, you, you just want to get a job and, and want to work in a particular field, mm -hmm. you can start early on. You don't have to wait to go to, go, to, go to university. You can start yeah. vocational skills, alternative ways of um, getting to where you want to be. Also, but the essential part, I think, is really necessary, like GCSE and A-levels. Mm -hmm. They teach you so many skills that are necessary in the workplace. Mm -hmm. So that's my thing. That's one point. I think it's, it depends on the student yeah. who wants to um, go to university or not. Mm -hmm. Mohammed, do you have any yeah, um, I mean, with, different um, opinions like on that? If you're talking about personal experience, um, I'm actually glad that I went to uni because I learned a lot in terms of uh, the field that I want to get into. Um, I think it really just depends on the person because university is not for everyone. That's, I think that's what people need to understand. There are many people out there that view university as like, okay, I, I haven't got into university, I lost all hope. Yeah. But there are like many apprenticeships or they can get into like any other sort of workforce that, you know, they can work their way up. So if, say for example, you're working at Marcus Spencer's, you know, you can stay, if you, in the next like 10 years, you should be like, a system manager or store manager, mm -hmm. there's still like, you can do many things, but university, it's a way of like, it's, it's a stepping stone basically. Mm -hmm. It's not like once, you're, once you uh, graduate at uni, that's it. And yeah. I think that's what a lot of Somalis uh, tend to view. Yeah. Like when you get to university, you graduate, yeah, you know, we <laughs> <Stop. gradu> <laughs> you know, graduated at university, you know, he's done, you know, but that's just a stepping stone. Uh -huh. There's like at least 10 steps left for you to achieve what you want. Mm -hmm. I think also, cause, um, the Somali people generally, they try to push their kids to go to university to get a better education. Um, but actually a recent survey it suggested that 56% of recent graduates, when um, they applied for a job, they felt that the, they were better than other, ca other candidates, mainly because they were more qualified. Do you think that has anything, do you think like, as in? Yeah, of course, in the long run, if you were, if you were to graduate from university, you're, of course your income will be higher, mm -hmm. most likely. Um, also, um, the chance of you demonstrating your actual skills, the way to communicate even the skills that you have, would be much higher if you went to university compared to if you didn't go to university. Mm -hmm. um, so it gives you a lot of essential skills that you need at workplaces, like communication skills, all the basic skills that anyone needs. But um, that's not the only way, of course, as Mohammed said, that's not the only way you can achieve those skills. You can also learn those skills through, you know, apprenticeships, you know, internships in, in, in different companies and stuff like that. Yeah. But certain, of course, certain field require for you to be, you know, have a, being graduated on that and have a certificate that proves that at least you've done the necessary skills to. Do you Give think it. that mindset, you know, generally of Omada Somalia, do you think we should try and get rid of it slowly, like it's a necessity for you to go to Jama'ad? So maybe we'll call Qurabayan or something um, related to business. Hmm. So maybe 
he doesn't need to go to Jamaat, but because the pressure of the family is suggesting for him to go to university. So in essence, it's a sense of sharaf, for example, in the community. So we um, go to university, but we will go to the same academically <laughs> on on hisaynin dadka marka loo ma inta ban Soomaalido ilmaha wax wala u force gareeyaan lama deeyo wax kale oo ilmuhu ku fiican yahay halaya gacanta shaqada gacanta inuu ku fiican yahay inuu plumber u kala ku fiican yahay waxaladan oo ka duwan baa la ay kala laakiin focus aad waxaan u saarnaa muuta jaamacad kale in ay taahor markii waxaad ku gaari karto mana aarno hanti jaamacad kale waxaad hor markii ku gaari karto siyaalo badan oo kala hor markii ku gaari karta it's it's just weird because many of these um like somalis like they 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 say they went to university they did this they mm -hmm. did that blah blah but at the same time they're not using what they've learned to mm -hmm. fulfill what they should be doing yeah. it's like it's kind of like okay i've done this but i'm not going to do it like it's just uh, you think to yourself okay why did you waste four five six years of your life doing whatever it is and at the same time you're not fully fulfilling what you want to do yeah. it's kind of like a waste of time and a waste of your mm -hmm. money so and i think in somalia that it's like a lot of people are very qualified like they mm -hmm. they have the papers they have like when it comes to papers they're there uh. but when it comes to like experience when it comes to like okay what else do you have on the table mm. it nothing is being shown yes you know yeah. um, I, th I think i think partially what muhammad is saying is right the experience is there the knowledge is there the theory is there like in, when you're not getting a chance when you come out of university, unemployment is at an all-time high. Mm. There is no jobs. So it's difficult mm. for the person to actually, you know, put that theory into practice. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what makes it difficult for people. And that's, you know, university almost becomes a safety zone at that point, mm -hmm. where the person can almost you know, wait for three years until they know what they want to do, and then find out that later on in life. But don't you think, yes, in like, uh, mm. one of the reasons why a lot of Somalis uh, not just Somalis, a lot of youngsters are not doing great after university. It's mainly to do with the fact that they were forced by the parents of what, what kind of course they should do. Like, like we quite, uh, Somali, we, uh, you have to be the engineer, doctor, lawyer. If you're not none of those, then you basically, you know, uh, people don't consider you study a serious subject. So I don't, I think that's the mentality that we, we Somalis have to address because if we want our mm. kids to succeed, they have to choose, choose what, whatever um, the kid wants to do rather than what the parents want the kids to do. No, absolutely, absolutely. I think you're right. Mm -hmm. um, well, you know, like, as in, do you think um, to encourage Wilka, the Jama'ad, maybe it's a good thing because. I mean, Somalia, the, when you're more, when you're better knowledge, as in, obviously, you know what to do in the outside world, you have certain experiences, for example, you want to do medicine, you can treat the Somali people, maybe you can go back home, you can help the Somali people, so maybe the idea of, I mean, Umada Somalia, in encourage Karayan, we'll call them, it's a kabotada, in a jama'ada, then maybe that's a good thing. Maybe that's what separates us from the rest of different cultures. There is a, okay. there, there is a difference yani, between encouragement and actual forcefulness. Mm -hmm. If you encourage someone to do something, then yani, uh, make sure that, that what the thing you're encouraging them on mm -hmm. is something yani, that's organic coming from them. Mm -hmm. Positive encouragement. Positive encouragement, basically. Mm -hmm. But if you are forcefully implying your thoughts on someone else, that's, that's mm -hmm. not encouragement. That's, that's you yani, vicariously living through your son. Mm -hmm. And I think... Yani, that's the difference between what I did so well. What you got so some of the Taruto in the Kutalu, they want them to, to, to go and carry on that mm -hmm. torch. And that's, that's probably what, 
the biggest difficult is. And also the kid is the one who's going to go through that difficult route. If mm. he's not ready or if he's not ready, then there's, no matter how much the parents want them to be a doctor or an engineer or whatever field the parents want them to do it, mm. they, they won't do it because they are, they're the ones who are going to go through that um, field. So I think the, the parents need to understand that. And at some point they need to step back from their kids, mm. tell them what to do, um, like from young age, they need to encourage, like, what do you want? Ask those questions. Why do you want? Like, we kind of have to get what the kid wants mm. rather than what the parents want. Of course, you know, um, every daughter or son, maybe they don't want to follow the same route as their father or their mother. They want to go do something different. But then, you know, you look at Abahada and Hoyadada as a role model. So how Arakta as if you know Abi Kasidan Sumaya, Hoy the Sidan Samasa. So Ani maybe Waharaba in a Maga Rak and Asiwado. So I wanna do what they're doing. So maybe that's in itself is a good thing, but of course Makalagaro at a certain age, for example, had the GCSE had Alukurachira. After GCSE Wahala saw that A level. When you go to A level, you choose what subjects you want to do. Mm. Essentially, those subjects you want to go for a career path in them. So, do you think when is the right time to step back? When is the right time for Hoya that Ya Abaha Inisha in a Kodahan we call them Sakabadada? You know, Adiwa Haratit Same, Anaganako supports Garana, like you see, essentially it's up to you. So, what age do you advise the mum and the dad to step back? And then as early as primary school at the last up to ah, we how we go for well it's good for Ubahia in Ilman Kukot or you, Wahan, Ilman Maratim, Halma have been with Kusso, the show, or Peru Samena, I am a Wah Ubahan, what the banana in that get is from Boot Casual in Malarata and Engineer or Doctor Nogolo. From young it Google or Telegram or he sees in my Kogan Karba, so got the Karta, Library Ginketa, of all experts that field to Koa, Ginketa, so I like with Ginketa. Marka Maha Kedia in Wallet Ko or Nogolo. وحشاجه لكن وانه النقضه وده تسلف تي سدون سجي كرنين وده دي تو سكن وانه قف وده ده توصى اما ما عرفته وهذا وده ده سو ولي ما ده حقدر انت علي ياسين you know سعيد بفضاي انا توستيد from an early age علي maybe they have a different opinion so maybe you can leave a bit later because essentially we come to go to see Korea they're growing in age and we go to see Korea so maybe Early, it's not the right time in in our court encourage career because maybe the dash had the man early age is a bit forcefulness. Wilka Willie, he hasn't gone through Mr. Gabata, she hasn't gone through the life stages to make their own decision. So, if from an early age you're pushing your kid or something to do engineer, go to an expert in field, that in itself is encouragement or whatever you want to call it, forcefulness to essentially make your kid do what you want to do if mm. you have a feeling so maybe do you guys think that that you could do that maybe at a later age or i think there is there is yani ronan wa suka ta hani gan daniel ma kan ku yari hay hada ulay saartid ku dadi abu hanbaron oo yo hanbaron lena awli hina you almost yani steering the car in one way you could step off and then again give them freedom and then later on in life Force your hand on them. Mm -hmm. Like it depends. Yeah, it, it, it's a fine balance that has to be struck between yeah. the two. Either, either you tell them to do something, or you step back and say, "This is up to you." Like, like, if you go to the club, you go to the club. 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 You go to ويركو وأركو مبدورن كلا لكن أوردي ما هيستو إنف إكسبيرينس إنه ما أردت واحد لون صوم مرة ده هو إنه ما أبعد إنه as much as you can in a variety of different field at in my suit to 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 yeah no hello to the girl of course we're not going to get in the room of us but like in task and I think it's very important element that we are as a Somali missing now like in task we're going to have a little bit of a little bit of course, like, no, that's what I mean. I think in a minute to stop, 
وحد قطع علمي توسع متى المقف أو قف فرصة كرينة ما أنت وحد أوك حيس فير لقى حلا إنجنيير غورف عيال كلا قط لقى كلا بري وحد أوك حيس أنادا فيل بري كلا وحد أوك حيس أنادا فيل مركا at least to hot سيس variety بات سيس وعلمي كدور كلا كده تحسين ما ما علمي ما عرفت ما ما يلان كروح سو ما عرفت ربو so if we go back to the question which was essentially um, you give your own opinion so Marta Jamaad is it better than an apprenticeship in a week trade key support in a social so to work his way up essentially is that better than university or can it be the other way around do you like as in you can give your own personal opinion would you want personally would you want to go to university or would you do an apprenticeship obviously you have all been through the yeah, university yeah. period but going back if you could change something would you go do something different honestly for me um i would if i were to go back in time i would exactly go through the same route that i, I went through because it was something that i was really passionate about mm -hmm. science and math it was something that i really was passionate about since i was kid so mm -hmm. it was something that i i wanted to go in further and study mm -hmm. so that could be a biased view of myself but mm -hmm. in general you don't have to go through that same path mm -hmm. to succeed in whatever you want to do yeah. there are different routes to everything you know so mm -hmm. what about you two do you would you go back in time change it or would you stick to say obviously you can give your biased um, views yeah but then i mean i if anything going through the university period i would probably wish that i could have done a bit more experience perhaps mm -hmm. like uh, like maybe do you know work in volunteering section um, mm -hmm. work in voluntary organizations I would have done more should have done more mm -hmm. um, that's the only thing but I mean I'm, I'm pretty happy as to you know doing the degree and everything but um, with regards to the question um, I really think it depends on what field you want to get into mm -hmm. it really because if you're yeah. doing business I mean it's it's you don't really have to do the like sort of business degree but it's 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 important to understand it because mm -hmm. it's good to have basically you know the saying knowledge is power yeah. so I would recommend people to go to university based on that sort of quote um, because it will help you in a later period to gain more information mm -hmm. um, it's important because the world is just full of information nowadays mm -hmm. but you know um, had the when you go to Jamaat it's becoming more and more competitive so for example we Kather may have top one A star, Sadahi top one A star, but even then he's going to struggle in a Jama'at Fi An Hira. So, do you think instead of waiting around in a Jama'at Fi An Hishid, like for example with business, you don't really need to go to a business, you don't really need to do a business degree. So, do you think maybe you can go work where you want to work, for example, and work your way up and sort of learn your trade in a way? Um, that's going to essentially, do you think, would that be better than? doing a business degree for let's say three years you come out and you knew I would say do both I would say go work before you start uni mm -hmm. go to a I don't know business firm or whatever you mm -hmm. know gain some experience over there and then go to uni mm -hmm. I think uh, I think I think it's right what Mohammed's is saying because there is a lot of like mystery around how to work life is especially when you're at university mm -hmm. those three years studying those books can become yeah, and it almost yeah, romanticized at one point mm -hmm. and then when you step into the real real you know, work life, nine to five, it's completely different. So if you have a mixture of both and kind of understand what it is that you're going into after you finish university, at least you come with a realistic view the moment you finish. Mm -hmm. where, we, where do we get this notion of, like, you want to do business, you don't have to go to this. I mean, As you don't need to, go to do a, mm -hmm. a degree. Because to me, it's it just like, it, 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 you could say the same thing within other field. You could say you don't need a degree in engineering to mm -hmm. to, to to be an engineer. Uh, so business needs the same skills that any other field needs. I think that's one of the actual also other mentality that is feeding to our uh, conversation that business is here. Yeah, it's fine. You can you can go through it without doing the degree. Yeah, it's fine. Mm -hmm. it's, 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 uh, I just don't get how, where Obviously, that came um, from. You know, for example, I did not doctor no Obviously, in a job, it's essential. Yeah. But um, also, what you said was right. As in business, people feel as if they don't need to do a degree in it. So they instead they do an apprenticeship. They go for an intern somewhere maybe and work their way up. But um, obviously, there's different sectors. Engineer maybe hatta wohu bahi hai na jam adla 
تقصر go through internship and work your way up even in engineering but uh, I mean I think it was one of those things that us Somalis we tend to kind of belittle some of the um, uh, fields like saying hey, it doesn't need you can just still um, do it with that degree and I think that's a that's a that's one thing we should address maybe you know all the Somaliyet they feel as in on a good or we'll call them Sagawata or they're going to become Donald Trump or they're going to become Lord Sugar, Alan Sugar and Nona Konya. That's one in a hundred, that's one in a yeah. thousand is going to become that kind of thing. And but even those guys, even when you ask them, they would like, if I were to go to university, I think I would have been better than what, I mean, not, not Alan Sugar, but that guy. I mean, it gives you the skills. University is necessary for so many mm -hmm. things. So let's not, um, let's not just limit the mm -hmm. discussion to business. Well, it's difficult so. as well, yeah. you, you can't, you, like, all, obviously all of us have been through university, it's difficult to answer a question in hindsight. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, we don't know what it would have been like, apprenticeship, maybe it would have turned out better, or would have turned out worse, uh, you never yeah. know. For example, yeah. you know, Ani had the, maybe, um, yeah. Daniela, my age, yeah. they don't know what they want to do. For yeah. example, I was saying you ask a lot of kids when they're this age, what do you want to do? Do you want to become a doctor? Do you want to become something? So they all, essentially, they push their kid to do the academ academia, for example. They want to become academically established. Mm. Obviously, you have some people, um, or maybe acad academia, for example, mm. they're not really focused on it. So maybe a different route, maybe, you know, it's not really going to university. Maybe they can... Um, get out of university, maybe someone might be more gifted in sport or they, um, as in had the Yusoma Farah, he won the world championship. Mm. Someone could be inspired by that and then they can go on and do that sport. So instead of going for maybe a university or an apprenticeship, is there mm. a third way to maybe push to what you want to do? Well, there probably is. I, th I think there is. There is. There's always a third way. There's always another way. The mm -hmm. thing is like, is the parents willing to take that risk? Mm -hmm. It all comes down to risk. Are you willing to, to, to take a risk on, you know, letting your kid follow their dream? And most parents, Somali parents, aren't. And I think I that's th an important element that I think as Somali parents, we need to let, let the kid make as many mistakes as possible mm. before they're too old to make mistakes. So that mm. will be the only way you can learn in life, even if you went to go. If you, if you went to university. Mm. Yeah, as in, of course, that's maybe an essential part. Um, mm. But Somalia, as they say, we neither are an accent So maybe as yeah. you get older, you get better. Mm -hmm. So, for example, it's not necessarily that. For example, I don't know how to come out of it. I don't know how to come out of it. I don't know how to come out of it. Like, I don't know how to come out of it. I don't know how to come out of it. I don't know how to come out of it. I don't know how to come out of it. I don't know how to come out of it. I don't know how to come out of it. I don't know how to come out of it. Had that we had done try Karay, so uh. you can still recover from it. That's mm -hmm. why you have to make as many mistakes as possible. I think what I was getting at is because you know Abahada, Ihoida, they went through a lot of stuff. Wahbadan Isamaran. So Bika Akhri Badan Hina in a way. Maybe Adil Haskumala Sa and Akhri Badan Sahai Mahaja Mada Kasa Bahada Dakhtara Nakota. But essentially you don't have that same life experience as Hoyada the Abahada. So what they're pushing towards is Bugihin Hikahadlian, do you get so um, sometimes in specific field encouragement or of Kupush Karen Kerta. Like at the same time, Halaya Abba and Musifa and Ufam, Waha Adega Kufi and Tam Hoida and Ufam, Sadat a Mel Alan Berikas on the Conquer in a Kupush Karen or Kasho or Adona Adega at Shalet and Talayawa. What about you, Mahmoud? I then do you think maybe the mum and dad know what they're talking about most of the time, Mirke Kahadlian? Um, what field you should essentially go in? Or do you think maybe, you know, then? Me again, <laughs> they don't know what they're talking about. So I came out of drama, I came out of high school, A level or somewhere. I know what I'm talking about. Let me go decide for myself. I mean, in my, I think with me, experience comes above qualifications. You know, parents they went through so much mm -hmm. pain. They went through so much in order for me to come to the UK. So I have to like, it's in my like 
sort of conscious to actually like listen to what they're saying mm -hmm. and like to follow what they're saying to some extent mm -hmm. but when it comes to like you know field and all that stuff you know it's you know the parents should like listen as well it has to be a two-way thing mm -hmm. they can't be like you know they input their thing and my opinion is out of the window mm -hmm. and what I say their opinion is out of the window mm -hmm. there has to be a two-way thing where we come to a compromise ha, that, that's an essential part as well because you know something or they essentially say you know um, so so hopefully you can succeed in life yeah. so um, that two-way thing hata is something you know Somalia, the, and essentially it's not wow. Somalia the Hatta, mm -hmm. it's the rest of the globe as well. Yeah. They think, of course, they, they've been through more life experiences, but then your input really doesn't matter at all. Because when you put an input in, yeah. how can he tell me what to do, for example? No, I, I think it's absolutely right. And yeah, I think it's absolutely right. 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 I think you you kind of kind of dismiss your parents for thinking that they're not on the same level mm -hmm. that everyone else is on. Mm -hmm. So it's up to us to kind of connect that bond. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. At the same time, Sue Mohammed Shay had the call. Why any wallet could live to a Halabon or Law, Hebrew, Bellin, and Moo, child kiss in a year and a day along the Gistamba or Babuhima, or in an unbought Pushi, a little company of Lushway in the home. So basically, I think what they son, um, Hoyather, Ea Abaha, Ea Unga, in a slow other Hadlan. So so maybe um both sides always community so ودعوي أي أي أشياء هاي أي هاي إما مختص وما حكوا سمايا أي نوصل مرتى هاي نوصل مرتى so essentially بونكاست إن هذا فور كريا في عن سكن سؤال شبابات وطوها social media activism you know هذا دوسي بدنا هذا it's become more and more popular is it really effective does it really help سمعنا هذا تاني يرى هذا or even just some other general, does it really help? Was it better in Allah Sabaha, in our Bahla Samaya, instead of keyboard can I put it? Then I go about social media or that Halaya of how we were a little bit of a malo in a marate, or mother at Katsi, so Eregaga, if a cratada, and a good piece. So, of course, while I let Fia, I did Sylvia and lost a malo. Like in Interbellum had the other. شيء بمر وحاليا ترينينج إنه سمعنا يا أما تويتر كسمعنا يا أما إنستغرام أو قف كست أو مر كأي هذا كمدة وسكرعه. That is not a real activism. Activism هو أنا أعتقد إن دكاتر ما تو عاد وقت جاك قيب كمدة عاد كليسو كده من عاد كم مرة ده لسه وبعانتها. كلام مرة ده لنتي كم وقع أنت كرت تلاقي تويت أو تسميس أستدح تويت أو تسميس أفر إنستغرام أو تقرت فيديو أو تكلت كم وقع أنت كرت ملاح إن الأشياء إنك وأنا تكتو أما أتقول ده إذا إن أت practical at 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 the same time و information how to transfer information via social media لكن information كم مصمم فعل كل الرابع فعل كو حاسم بالآدم مرجع بالآدم كي بعمل قنبل مودا information بس كل كتير بينه هبل هاي الدقيقة هبل هاي الدقيقة تو ما أردت أن أسكول ده ما أردت أن تويت كي as many retweets as possible in Ohio. Yeah, um, I think 
it's important to know how to use it. I mean, like Somali Cyrus, for example, it started on Instagram. My first post mm-hmm. was on Instagram. Um, and initially, my idea was to just take photos of Somalis. It wasn't of the story aspect didn't come in. Mm-hmm. I wanted to take Somali um, pictures in mm-hmm. London. Mm-hmm. Um, and later on, it started to pick up. So I thought, let me put the, the input of the story. So people mm-hmm. like will express the most deepest of story that they don't normally share mm-hmm. to people, let alone online. Mm-hmm. So, and that started to pick up and it started to go like, you know, it was like a demand kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So then I started taking photos of people mm-hmm. um, on a daily basis and then the international um, sort of stage came and people started to send me stories from around the world. Mm-hmm. Um, but going back to the question, I think it's really important to know how to use it properly. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not saying that there are people like a lot of people in, so for example, you know, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or mm-hmm. any of these platforms are not using it in a good way, mm-hmm. but it, it's, it just, it really just depends on what they share. I mean, it's, at the end of the day, it's your platform, mm-hmm. you know, it's your choice, whatever you post, you know, even if it's something that's like, something that you don't agree with mm-hmm. or something that you're like, hey, why did this person post this post? Like it's mm-hmm. wrong or whatever. Mm-hmm. It's their platform. Yeah. So you have to give that right to them, mm-hmm. whatever it is, whatever your disagreement. So I think it's just, it's really, you know, with regards to like what you post, it's important. Mm-hmm. Um, if you're posting something positive, something that will people, when they look back and they're like feeling inspired or in change their mindset of the day, mm-hmm. of the week, of the month, or even mm-hmm. the year, mm-hmm. then you know, you've done your job on social media. Yeah. And that's, for me, that's the whole concept of Samari Cyrus, so that mm-hmm. the mindset can change. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, yes, I, uh, I think, yeah, I mean, Social media has helped a lot. Like they, they, they've helped you know change regimes in the world. Yeah, the Tunisia uprising was partially due to the social media. Mm-hmm. Same thing that happened in Egypt was mm-hmm. partially due to social media. The problem with social media, however, is that when you say activism, when you post stuff on social media, mm-hmm. it takes away that responsibility of you putting in action. It kind of mm-hmm. gives you yeah, the credibility of saying, okay, I've done my part. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I leave it to, to the rest of the world. And I think that's a very dangerous thing that could happen. Mm-hmm. Whereas activism before was something on you know, a grassroots level. Mm-hmm. Now you sharing a post is, is, is almost the equivalent of you, you know, I've done this, I've helped, I've, I've actually put in effort. Mm-hmm. I think Somalia, we should really, I don't know why, 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 basic stuff, you know, I don't know why, I don't know why, where should I go, online, I don't know school those things are really practical things and I think the way the world is moving with them that we are becoming more you know, glamorized with, with stuff that takes place online mm-hmm. where we're almost losing the, you know, the, the attachment or the relatability the to the human level mm-hmm. and I think that's a very dangerous distinction that can happen mm-hmm. when you talk about activism because you know um, social media as mm. in we'll see now that over the years it's yeah. become more and more popular. So some um, an English saying Bahawian keyboard warriors. So Matalon Hukrachin and computer ko see Horian. Like you see in essence into keyboard warriors skanakon hayan, maybe in a Bahanafian, maybe in a air than outside event in a Samayan, in a Dan Yarada Somali then a so canan, in a la hadlan, then essentially um, social media in a Kurachiran. But of course had the you see a lot of Dan Yara or social media kuso badnada. That you have one and they're already on Facebook and Instagram. So it has its ways, both ways it can be seen, but then as an effect, really, because I think has some science, underscore science terminologies. So maybe off online curricula or science challenge, or if somebody had to take in science word, do you think maybe what has some is really effective in Ugaria than the other Somali? Just before internet action, I was also not theorized in an in an in a lot of there was a there was a research that came out of uh, Cambridge. It was on the news mm-hmm. where they found out a kid who spends four four hours mm-hmm. more on screen mm-hmm. is le- is more likely to drop two grades down ah. um, compared to a kid who didn't spend the same amount of time. Mm-hmm. So. It is becoming an issue now um, of 
most of these kids are going on social media, they have a smartphone where they can use Facebook, Twitter, mm -hmm. all the social medias. Mm -hmm. So that is one element that mm -hmm. I think the discussion also kind of have to include mm -hmm. when we um, talking about this social media point. Mm -hmm. The second point that you came to, of course, my way of delivering that Somali terminology is not going to be, it's not going to be aimed at every single body on the social media. Mm -hmm. My aim and objective of the project is just that the Somali language is kind of dying out mm -hmm. and is dying out in the most important areas mm -hmm. like um, scientific r research because at the end of the day if you want to communicate a particular idea to a Somali person that doesn't speak your language mm -hmm. then it becomes لبعتها <laughs> English science terminology So I should know could be Samantha Bernamish can offer her um Somali um in England, um does the education system does it really help um maximize the potential of the Somali youth today, for example, than Yara the or high school course or than um high school could really wah make a batan because high school rala ada sahibyasha the Allah Sobashala or Allah Hadla really like does it maximize potential kaza as in based on your experience I think then as in maybe maybe the dial college below and has Mahmoud Garana no primary school kusabarta. Did it help you really maximize your potential? Um, I want to talk about something because you said England, right? Mm -hmm. um, I want to compare that to other nations. Mm -hmm. So if we're looking at, for example, mm -hmm. the Asian continent, mm -hmm. China and Japan, when you, when you focus on the aspect of their high school, the process mm -hmm. of how they, you know, get into, it's, it's more of a, like, the way that they, the reason why China is where it is today or mm -hmm. why the school system is one of the best yeah. in the world when it comes to technology mm -hmm. and when it comes to gaming mm -hmm. is because not only do people have interest of it, it's mm -hmm. like they get tested on a weekly mm -hmm. basis, constantly. It's like a routine. It's like they know, like, with, with what's amazing about them is like they have a, like, ritual, like they do this, mm -hmm. they do that, they have a schedule to fulfill. Yeah. Whereas if you look at the England, like, system, mm -hmm. It's like, it's like they focus on the high school or the school, whatever it is, so much mm -hmm. that they yes. forget to tell them, hey, do this at home, mm -hmm. or do that at home, or mm -hmm. do that at home, whatever. And I think that's what's declining in high school, you know, sixth form college or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's because they don't, they don't pressurize the kids to do stuff at mm -hmm. home. And I think that's, that's very important. Uh, it's some part of um, the Chinese um, compared to the UK. Mm -hmm. I mean, of course, I, I agree with Mohammed that our schools are failing because of the number of students per class, per teacher mm -hmm. is, is crazy. Mm -hmm. Even compared to China, China has got more students, but they're not disciplined as much. But also one thing we, we need to understand is that the kids in here, um, compared to the kids in China, mm -hmm here they allow more creativity whereas in China it's like an instruction given to the kid mm -hmm. whereby they go through every single day and they repeat over again and again mm -hmm. and that limits the kid mm -hmm. whether he want to think outside the box mm -hmm. so that's an element that our, our schools here are, are good mm -hmm. they're not better but in so many ways of course in science in math mm -hmm. China and uh, Singapore are leading mm -hmm. and the reason why they're leading because they're disciplined that mm -hmm. particular way but also I think it helps, mm -hmm. uh, our schools helps our kids. Uh, mm -hmm. But there's one element which is that you have to help the kid at home. Mm -hmm. So the system has to change mm -hmm. slightly. Because you know, the Diyashwa Hedahan, one way of knowing that your other Somali in the UK are failing is because every hoi uh, is looking for a tutor. But that's <laughs> across the country. Ha. It's like in London, it was, it was the day before yesterday, 44% uh -huh. of people in London mm -hmm. have a private tutors. Uh -huh. It's not just the Somalis. Uh -huh. 
44 percent that's a almost 50 percent of the londons have. have a private tutors that's that as in in a way that's the ogre and said in um the nyara the somala or maybe hata the nyara in general uk again that they're essentially falling behind because wahala arka um you know muhammad al-hud hai jama'at yasha or school yasha in japan mr china essentially when it comes to you in english but then again wahala arka we'll come a lot there are homework mr maka lot there are shakha in the same yagurika kurigo ada kursi go for this the tv go da wala not to that because we'll give you a bit from school kakun of the معلم ده بحس يعني كرت أو كلام، so أنا وحن هذا معلم ده ديبه هومك هومك هذا ديبن وحن مي كسمان كرت أسانشلي مي دلي كرت مي تهابن كرت هذا حتى أيكو قايل so maybe I complain كلام كرا أنا child busy كسماسة so maybe you know discipline ك أنا لسوء عليا not as in أنا لديله but maybe harsh أنا لو كنا خذ دنيا رضا أنا to find their way. Of Maybe. course, the discipline has to come back. Mm-hmm. Um, there's there's no much of a discipline in the British school system, mm-hmm. but the actual system, how the lessons are delivered, mm-hmm. I think I would prefer more the British way compared to the Asian way. So mm-hmm. that's my personal preference. I think it's due to creativity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We have more technology than we ever had before. Mm-hmm. The information is available, readily right. available. Huh. But the problem is when curiosity doesn't strike a child, he doesn't mm-hmm. feel the need to go find the answer. Mm-hmm. When everything is there for you, you don't feel the need to go and search for it. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what education is lacking at the moment, mm-hmm. is given that ability to feel it about them. I can work it out in a different way because every answer is given to them. Because you know, Dalinara, the English character, many of them, while they are the whole of them, are the whole of them. قحن هل كنا يعمل ذا؟ so essentially with the Roman debtor of واحد برشينا رادي سد أنا did mel fuck أنا to walk like quite a long time to go study maths like see هل كان your bus pass is free حتى ما بحين سد وحنا did it at one hour or six hours you're at school وحنا وحنا with the Roman debtor for example there's no burden burden كون نحو يعني بعد هسنا سا درم كو كل شيء ده كده so um dipta like you don't appreciate it enough because murku wah kata i appreciate it mm. so so had had he had a like if you would destroy the bus system mm. if the child had to walk 10 15 miles mm. to go to school he start to appreciate it more mm-hmm. so appreciation is one but also curiosity like yasin said is another but the third one i think um because when you're young you're you look up at your role models. So maybe we get at high and you have Walala Kawin and maybe themselves they don't care about college in air then maybe we have Malayan trust fund in Okusa Hajiridon a bank holder. So they essentially as in <laughs> they essentially believe that something is there, it's ready for them already. Make a cup of hand jam it's already ready for them. Or they don't even need to go to Jam Ad. So you can blame system ka or English ka like you see you know Musa again, the blame Gary and Gal Dil Gerti Sanasi. So you have to, and uh, you know, you have to, you have to help. You have to appreciate both sides of the story. So I think, as in, maybe the youth in the UK or the youth in general need to start appreciating it more. What do you think? I think you, you pretty much summed up all, all of it. Like, of course, the kids need to appreciate, but also we need to understand the time we're in. Kids hardly appreciate anything mm-hmm. nowadays. Mm-hmm. The reason being is that we need to discipline our kids at mm-hmm. our houses. Mm-hmm. Even forget what was happening in the school. If we start the real discipline mm-hmm. from home, then they can take that discipline to school to learn mm-hmm. something new, to educate themselves, to behave in a, in, in in good way, in good manners, in public and arenas. So we should start from uh, home. I believe it. You know, not too long. Halaka had la discipline. So I'm gonna get discipline better than our house better. But mar mar by um, your actions speak louder than words. Mm. So are they instead of in a wheelchair every time we cross the erected and we cover the TV and the audio, it's a song we saw behind that maybe in a lot of the shadow fear. Maybe you know in a that you know Abba, Mr. Hoya, we have a summer, we have a jirta, we have in a lot of fear. No, I should have listened to it. Maybe in a gated, maybe we not in a lot of fear. In a lot of fear, we have a lot of fear. For example, so. 
Also, you know, what I like basic or hatcher and then I mm -hmm. like him, him in a own car, for example, okay, having a scream at family dinner in the movie, the carto, until the fogate telephone, another oil more than well to scream at that, la shake case to in my love with you, romantic summer. Why else would I keep up calling that in my wife person see discipline? See easy and over, like I did, or to have a push again, they so my TV, so the TV and academy, why not on a side on slash and time and I'm in the middle of the way. Game as I are, for example. هاي تلفزيون كان يكدي من السلام مركز سياحة بسوق على تلفزيون كاشيلا أنا جيم عيارة. ها وات وات. for example أنا هاي في كسم جرت بلاي ستيشن كعيارة كده so أنت كنترول كيكة خالد so مركز إنترنت كيكة دم السلام ده ده محاها تسمعين كده for example so as in of course واحد سلوب بهاي هاي لكن سي Like what have you and maybe in a slahad no more family dinner all the time. Ah, but how come how come how come he has such a how come such a person who doesn't know how to do it. So he has his own job. So I'm not a cop. We're not a cop. As in we're not a cop. So 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 we're not a cop. All of that together, um, I think, and then I think generally, like as in Omada Somalia, then your other we so and we can maybe be one of the leading nations in um, education system Kenya, because I think potential is there. Always, Malin, Maka added, we had we had we had that potential, we had that potential. Can we not have we go go actually, but then classic, like you see potential, we have been here in the past, hard work in the past. So potential necessarily ha one chronic artha like some chronic don't have for example yeah if you it's useless if you're not. Guriya hi na na ina mart uskuda yana system guriya ina kwa hais ma wala hel book la akhri ya hel baal la akhri ya ina na chronic mart ilma ha kili ina gusi ta lakin na kato guriya ku system ilma ha control kala ya u discipline kala ya wari kamal ma hussa ma ilha ina na chronic mart mal u saha u kato saha ina u u kana kuda ina na chronic. Well, I, um, the time is running short. But um, I'd like to thank you for joining us today in the youth show. And also, the Diashan Dawani Television Camero Bakadawani Sanba. And I'm a head in Nikotaha. Although, I'm a head in Nikotaha. 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 Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Zakaria Ahmed Hassan, and you are watching the youth show at, here live at SomaliCable.tv. This show is here to help, inspire, and empower young Somali people to greatness. You can call in with your success stories. We would love to hear. Have you recently passed your GCSEs with flying colours? Have you had any university offers? We would love to hear that here at the youth show at SomaliCable.tv. Likewise, are you going through any problems that you'd like to talk about? Together, me and you and the rest of the Somali nation, we can have solutions to overcome these problems. UK time. They're growing in age. Yeah. So maybe early, it's not the right time in in Aluko encourage because maybe the last one that man. Early age is a bit forcefulness. Wilka, mm. Willie, he hasn't gone through Mr. Gabata, she hasn't gone through the life stages to make their own decisions. So, if from an early age you're pushing your kid or something to do engineer, go to an expert in field, mm. that in itself is encouragement or whatever you want to call it, forcefulness yeah. to essentially make your kid do what you want to do if mm. you have a feeling. So, maybe do you guys think that? that you could do that maybe at a later age or? I think there is, there is. I mean, Ronan was so good. I mean, again, Daniel Mokka, I'm going to go here. I'm going to go to the house. 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 You're almost steering the car in one way. You could step off and then again give them freedom and then later on in life, force your hand on them. Like, it depends. I mean, it's a fine balance that has to be struck between the two. Either you tell them to do something or you step back and say, 
بالضبط هي لكن قلت لك لأنا قلت لك أنا 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 as much as you can mm. in a variety of different fields at in my suit to stuff to yeah let me walk out to the girl of course we're not going to get in the room of spy like in task and i think is very important mm. element that we are as a somali missing now like in task we're going to have a little bit of a little bit of course, like course. No. Like I don't collaborate. Maybe so if we go back to the question which was essentially um, you give your own opinion so Marta Jamaad is it better than an apprenticeship in a real trade key support in a social case or to work his way up essentially is that better than university or can it be the other way around do you, like as in you can give your own personal opinion would you want personally would you want to go to university would you do an apprenticeship obviously you have all been through the yeah, university yeah. period but going back if you could change something would you go do something different honestly for me um, I would if I were to go back in time I would exactly go through the same route that I, I went through because it was something that I was really passionate about mm -hmm. science and math it was something that I really was passionate about since I was kid so mm -hmm. it was something that I, I wanted to go in further and study mm -hmm. so that could be a biased view of myself but mm -hmm. in general you don't have to go through that same path mm -hmm. to succeed in whatever you want to do yeah. there are different routes to everything you know so mm -hmm. what about you two do you would you go back in time change it or would you stick to say obviously you can give your biased um, views yeah but then I mean I if anything Going through the university period, I would probably wish that I could have done a bit more experience, perhaps mm -hmm. like uh, like maybe do you know work in volunteering section, um, mm -hmm. work in voluntary organisations. I would have done more, should have done more. Mm -hmm. um, that's the only thing. But I mean, I'm I'm pretty happy as to you know doing the degree and everything. But um, with regards to the question, um, I really think it depends on what field you want to get into. Mm -hmm. It really because if you're yeah. doing business, I mean it's it's you don't really have to do the like sort of business degree but necess it's 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 important to understand it because mm -hmm. it's good to have basically you know the saying knowledge is power yeah. so i would recommend people to go to university based on that sort of quote um because it will help you in a later period to gain more information mm -hmm. um it's important because the world is just full of information nowadays mm -hmm. but you know, um, had the, when you go to Jamaat, it's becoming more and more competitive. So, for example, Wheel Kather may have top one A star, Sadahi top one A star, but even then, he's going to struggle in a Jamaat fi an -hira. So, do you think instead of waiting around in a Jamaat fi an -hishid, like for example, with business, you don't really need to go to a business, you don't really need to do a business degree. So, do you think maybe you can go work where you want to work? for example, and work your way up and sort of learn your trade in a way, um, that's going to essentially, do you think, would that be better than doing a business degree for, let's say, three years, you come out and you knew? I would say do both. I would say go work before you start uni, mm -hmm. go to a, I don't know, business firm or whatever, you mm -hmm. know, gain some experience over there and then go to uni. Mm -hmm. I, think, uh, I, think, I think it's right what Mohammed is saying because there is a lot of like mystery around how the work life is, especially when you're at university. Mm -hmm. Those three years studying those books can become يعني, almost يعني, romanticized at one point. Mm -hmm. And then when you step into the real real, you know, work life of nine to five, it's completely different. So if you have a mixture of both and kinda understand what it is that you're going into after you finish university, at least you come with a realistic view the moment you finish. Mm -hmm. where, we, where do we get this notion of like if you want to do business, you don't have to go to it's, I mean As you don't need to do, to do a, mm -hmm. a degree because uh, to me it's it just like 
uh, you could say the same thing within other fields. You could say you don't need a degree in engineering to mm -hmm. to, to to be an engineer. Uh, so business needs the same skills that any other field needs. I think that's one of the actual also other mentality that is feeding into our uh, conversation that business is here. It's fine. You can you can go through it without doing the degree. Yeah, it's fine. Okay. It's, 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 I just don't get how, where obviously, that came um, from. You know, for example, I don't know what I'm saying. Obviously, in a job, it's essential. Yeah. But um, also, what you said was right, as in business, people feel as if they don't need to do a degree in it. So they instead, they do an apprenticeship. They go for an intern somewhere, maybe, and work their way up. But um, obviously, there's different sectors. Engineer, maybe, I don't know what I'm saying. Yeah, you can go through internship and wait, work with your way up, even in engineering. But uh, I mean, I think it was one of those things that us Somalis, we tend to kind of belittle some of the um, uh, fields, like saying, hey, it doesn't need, you can just still um, do it without a degree. And I think that's, a, that's, a, that's one thing we should address. Maybe, you know, all the Somaliyet, they feel as in, on a good, or we'll call them Sagawato, they're going to become Donald Trump or they're going to become mm. Lord Sh Alan Sugar yeah. and Nona uh, That's uh, one in a hundred, that's one in a yeah. thousand is going to become that kind of thing. And but even those guys, even when you ask them, they would like, if I were to go to university, I think I would have been better than what, I mean, not, not Alan Sugar, but that guy. I mean, it gives you the skills. University is necessary for so many mm -hmm. things. So let's not, um, let's not just limit the mm -hmm. discussion to business. And it's difficult so. as well, yeah. you, you can't, you, like, all, obviously all of us have been through university, it's difficult to answer a question in hindsight. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, we don't know what it would have been like, apprenticeship, maybe it would have turned out better, or would have turned out worse, you never yeah. know. For example, yeah. you know, Ani had the, maybe, um, yeah. Daniela, my age, yeah. they don't know what they want to do. For yeah. example, I was saying you ask a lot of kids when they're this age, what do you want to do? Do you want to become a doctor? Do you want to become something? So they all, essentially, they push their kid to do the academ academia, for example. They want to become academically established. Mm. Obviously, you have some people, I think, do you think, like, as in? Yeah, of course, in the long run, if you were, if you were to graduate from university, of course, your income would be higher, mm -hmm. most likely. Um, also, um, the chance of you demonstrating your actual skills, the way to communicate even the skills that you have would be much higher if you went to university compared to if you didn't go to university. Mm -hmm. um, so it gives you a lot of essential skills that you need at workplaces, like communication skills, all the basic skills that anyone needs. But um, that's not the only way, of course, as Mohammed said, that's not the only way you can achieve those skills. You can also learn those skills through you know, apprenticeships, you know, internships in, in, in different companies and stuff like that. Yeah. But certain, of course, certain fields require for you to be, you know, have it, been graduated on that and have a certificate that proves that at least you've done the necessary skills to Do you it. think that mindset, you know, generally of Omada Somalia, do you think we should try and get rid of it slowly? Like, it's a necessity for you to go to Jama'ad, so maybe um, we'll call for a doctor or something um, related to business. Mm. So maybe he doesn't need to go to Jama'at, but because the pressure of the family is suggesting for him to go to university. So in essence, it's a sense of sharaf, for example, in the community. So um, we'll keep going for the university, but are we going to go to academically <laughs> On on Hisanin, that camera loma interban Somalado, Ilma Walu for Sigre, Lama de Teo, Wakalo, Mukufi, I'm Halaya Ganta, Shaka Ganta, Nukufi, I'm a plumber, Klokufi, I'm Haladon or Kadum Bal Ekara, like in folks Adam Hanusar Navad Muta, Chamat Kilia in a Tahor Murki, who had to Garikot, Mana Arma Hanti, Chamat Kilia, or Murku Garikot, Sialabon or Kala or Murku Garikota. Other than Mahmoud, yeah, I mean, I think with, with regards to that, it's more. It's, it's just weird because 
many of these um, like Somalis, like they, they, they say they went to university, they did this, they mm -hmm. did that, blah blah. But at the same time, they're not using what they've learnt mm -hmm. to fulfil what they should be doing. Yeah. It's like it's kind of like okay, I've done this, but I'm not going to do it. Like it's just uh, you think to yourself, okay, why did you waste four, five, six years of your life doing whatever it is, and at the same time, you're not fully fulfilling what you want to do. Yeah. It's kind of like a waste of time and a waste of your mm -hmm. money. So, and I think in Somalia, it's like a lot of people are very qualified. Like they, mm -hmm. they have the papers, they have like, when it comes to papers, they're there. Uh -huh. But when it comes to like experience, when it comes to like, okay, what else do you have on the table? Mm -hmm. it, nothing is being shown. Um, I, th I, think, I think partially Muhammad, what Muhammad is saying is right. The experience is there, the knowledge is there, the theory is there. Like in, when you're not getting a chance, when you come out of university, unemployment is at an all-time high. Mm. There is no jobs. So it's difficult mm -hmm. for the person to actually, you know, put that theory into practice. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what makes it difficult for people. And that's, yeah, I mean, university almost becomes a safety zone at that point, mm -hmm. where the person can almost yeah, I mean, wait for three years until they know what they want to do and then find out that later on in life. But don't you think, yes, in like uh, mm -hmm. one of the reasons why a lot of Somalis, uh, not just Somalis, a lot of youngsters are not doing great after university is mainly to do with the fact that they were forced by the parents of what, what kind of course they should do. Mm -hmm. like, like we quite, at uh, Somali, we, uh, you have to be the engineer, doctor, lawyer. If you're not none of those, then you basically, you know, uh, people don't consider you studied a serious subject. So I don't, I think that's the mentality that we, we Somalis have to address because if we want our mm. kids to succeed, they have to choose, choose what, whatever um, the kid wants to do rather than what the parents want the kids to do. No, absolutely, absolutely. I think you're right. Um, well, you know, like, as in, do you think um, to encourage real uh, the Jama'ad, maybe it's a good thing because, I mean, Somaliasha, the, when you're more, when you're better knowledge, as in, obviously, you know what to do in the outside world, you have certain experiences, for example, you want to do medicine, you can treat the Somali people, maybe you can go back home, you can help the Somali people. So maybe the idea of, I mean, Umada Somalia in encourage Karayan, um we'll call them as a Kabotada, in a Jamaada Adan, maybe that's a good thing. Maybe that's what separates us from the rest of different cultures. There is a, okay. there, there is a difference yani, between encouragement and actual forcefulness. Mm -hmm. If you encourage someone to do something, then yani, uh, make sure that that what the thing you're encouraging them on mm -hmm. is something yeah, that's organic coming from them. Mm -hmm. Positive encouragement. Positive encouragement, basically. Mm -hmm. But if you are forcefully implying your thoughts on someone else, that's, that's mm -hmm. not encouragement. That's, that's you yeah, vicariously living through your son. Mm -hmm. And I think yeah, that's the difference between what I did in Somalia. They want them to, to, to go and carry on that mm -hmm. torch. And that's, that's probably what the biggest difficulty is. And also the kid is the one who's going to go through that difficult route. If mm. he's not ready or if he's not ready, mm. then there's, no matter how much the parents want them to be a doctor or an engineer or whatever field the parents want them to do it, mm. they, they won't do it because they're, they're the ones who are going to go through that um, field. So I think the, the parents need to understand that. And at some point they need to step back from their kids, mm. telling what to do, um, like from young age, they need to encourage. Like, what do you want? Ask those questions. Why do you want? Like, we kind of have to get what the kid wants mm -hmm. rather than what the parents want. Of course, you know, um, every daughter or son, maybe they don't want to follow the same route as their father or their mother. They want to go do something different. But then, you know, you look at Abahada and Hoyadada as a role model. So how arakta as if you know Abi kasidno semaya hoi the the sidna semasa. So ani maybe wahar raba ina maga rak nasibado. So I want to do what they're doing. So maybe that in itself is a good thing. But of course, ma kalagaro a certain age. For example, had the GCSE had dalu kuhjira. After GCSE, wahar lasa ala A level. When you go to A level, you choose what subjects you want to do. Mm. Essentially, those subjects you want to go for a career path in them. So, 
do you think when is the right time to step back? When is the right time for Hoya the Iaba her in a shag in a cut the hand we call them Sakaba Dada? You know, Adiwa had a tit some air, and support Karana, like you see, essentially it's up to you. So what age do you advise the mum and the dad to step back? I mean as early as primary school at the last up to uh how of well it could be here in Mount Cook up or you wahan in Mount Maratin Halma have been with Kusso or Shoe or Peru Samena or Wah Ubahan Wahti Banan in that case who booked Kaso Kad in Malarata in engineer or doctor no from young age Google or Telegram or he sees in my Kogan Karba so got the carta library again Kata of all experts that field to go let again Kata so I let you think Kata Marka Maha Kedia in well it could not go. وحشاجه لكن وانه النقضه وده تسلف تي سدون سجي كرنين وده تسي كرن وانه قف وده تصا اما ما عرفته وهذا وده تصا و و لي ما ده حق ده انت علي ياسين يو نو سعيد بفضاي انا تو ستيت فروم ان ايرلي ايج علي ميبي دي هاف ا ديفرنت اوبينيون سو ميبي يو كان ليف ا بيت ليتر كوز اسينشلي ويل كم سجا بده بس السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته ماي نيم از زكريا احمد حسن and you're watching the youth show at, here live at SomaliCable.tv. This show is here to help, inspire and empower young Somali people to greatness. You can call in with your success stories, we would love to hear. Have you recently passed your GCSEs with flying colours? Have you had any university offers? We would love to hear that here at the youth show at SomaliCable.tv. Likewise, are you going through any problems that you'd like to talk about? Together, me and you and the rest of the Somali nation, we can have solutions to overcome these problems. ما جاي جوا حلا ده هذكري أحمد حسن عكا لسه على برنامج كسبتي والبال لحدة UK time والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته my name is Zakiri Ahmed Hassan Uke and you are watching the youth show in London here live at Somali Cable TV كل أنتي وناس ندمان تينا كسر دوا ده برنامج كدرني رضا أنا وحلا ده هذكري أحمد حسن عكا and today's main discussions are is university a better option than an apprenticeship, or is it the other way around? And is social media activism effective to the Somali youth of today? And does the education system in the UK really help push the potential of the Somali youth academically? Today's guests are Yasin, Mohammed Mahmoud, CEO of Somali Sideways, and Saeed, CEO of Science Terminologies in Somali. Kusa the Wadi Bernamishka. Yasin, Hadaratul Nabilawdid. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Yasin. Uh, I graduated last year, I studied finance and banking and I recently started a uh, platform called Ahlam Production whereby we showcase videos and, 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 and content and put that stuff online so for people to view. So that's what I do. My name is Mohammed. Uh, I created the platform called Somali Sideways. Um, it's been running for about a year now um, and a lot of uh, photos from around the world have been published online. And um, yeah, I'm looking to uh, do a number of things with that project, inshallah. Um, my name is Saeed Hassan. Um, I recently graduated uh, medical engineering master's. So, um, I run a project, I found a, a, a company called Yulen. We teach with my friend Badra, who is um, um, same, he studied at the same university as me. And part of that we teach, um, what I tend to deliver is that explain scientific terminologies in Somali so um, trying to get back the, our roots in Somali ah, I understand where do you guys see yourselves in five years time with your projects so Ahlam where do you see yourself in five years Somali sideways do you see it developing do you see it going anywhere um, Inshallah. Yeah, I mean, obviously, yeah, it's, it's, it's early days to say inshallah, but hopefully the aim is that it will develop and grow into something bigger. Yeah, and the whole point is to create mm -hmm. something that is, yeah, that the young people can relate to and yet again find a sense of belonging to. So, yeah, the whole point is to create something visually that is appeasing to people. So, after five years' time, hopefully we should be somewhere where we can look back and say we did, and we did well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, there's a lot of things that I should be able to do in five years' time. Uh, I, one of the things is um, I want to try and break off the Somali aspect of it because mm. I, I feel that in five years' time I would like to have gone through a lot of other ethnic minorities mm. that are standing sideways with the same concept. Huh. So hopefully that would be the, the, um, where um, the project should be in five years. Mm. 
Mm. So Mine, inshallah, it will be mainly about. Um, so now I lay down the foundation of like the terminologies and how mm -hmm. people understanding the basic terminologies in Somali. So the next move is that I want to do a scientific documentaries in Somali, full Somali, so that like stuff like physics, chemistry, biology, stuff that relevant, so that people back home at least can understand in Somali the stuff that's happening mm -hmm. in the world right now. Mahmoud, one question for you. You know, um, Mahadad, you want to break off the Somali aspect of it, but do you think that will maybe, like, not really, you were, your main idea was to help the Somali people when you started off, so if you break off the Somali aspect of it, maybe it will drive Somali people away from your project? Do you think that will maybe happen? Yeah, um, uh, well, it's, it's a bit of both, because, like, I don't want to focus on Somali cyberies in the, for the next five years, you know, because mm -hmm. that, that's, that's not really like moving forward and yes. be very static. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll, I hopefully like look at into other sort of um, ethnic groups mm -hmm. um, and to like broaden it, the sort of aspect of sideways into mm -hmm. making it more like on a world platform instead of a Somali thing. I mean, the Somali sideways will still be there, yeah. but I will still be doing other um, projects. I mm, understand. Um, I'll put the first question out there of the day, which was, um, do you think university um, is better than a pr an apprenticeship or do you think it's the other way around? So you can talk about your personal experiences maybe, um, whether university really helped you, seeing as all three of you have graduated from university. Do you think maybe going back in time you could have done something different, tried doing an apprenticeship? And you know, what would you advise to the Somali youth out there um, to do if you were put in your situation? So if you want to start off, yes. Uh, sure, yeah. Uh, that's a tough one, online because obviously uh, universities, apprenticeships, at the end lead to the same thing, which is employment at some mm -hmm. point. Um, if you know what you want to do early on, then apprenticeship is a good way to, to grow into that market and grow into that niche. Mm -hmm. University, you explore a lot of different things and you kind of ground your feet as well in terms of learning, learning different aspects. Mm -hmm. like, uh, but, but yeah, I think it really depends. It comes down to the individual. Uh -huh. that's, that's my um, it, again, uh, partially I agree with yes, but partially I try uh, attempt to differ. If I mean, I mean, if you want to um, um, go to university and, and academically you're gifted or academically you want to really pursue a career mm -hmm. in academic, then that is the only way you have to go through. But if, for example, you you just want to get a job and and want to work in a particular field mm -hmm. you can start early on you don't have to wait to go to go to go to university you can start yeah. vocational skills alternative ways of um, getting to where you want to be also but the essential part I think is really necessary like GCC and A levels mm -hmm. they teach you so many skills that are necessary in the workplace mm -hmm. so that's my thing that's one point I think it's, it depends on the student yeah. who wants to um, go to university or not. Mm -hmm. Mohammed, do you have any yeah, um, I mean, with, different um, opinions like on that? If you're talking about personal experience, um, I'm actually glad that I went to uni because I learned a lot in terms of uh, the field that I want to get into. Um, I think it really just depends on the person because university is not for everyone. That's I think that's what people need to understand. There are many people out there that view university as like, okay, I, I haven't got into university, I lost all hope. Yeah. But there are like many apprenticeships or they can get into like any other sort of workforce that, you know, they can work their way up. So mm -hmm. if, say for example, you're working at Marcus Spencer's, you know, you can stay, if you, in the next like 10 years, you should be like a system manager or store manager. Mm -hmm. There's still like, you can do many things, but university, it's a way of like, it's, it's a stepping stone, basically. Mm -hmm. It's not like once, you're, once you uh, graduate at uni, that's it. And yeah. I think that's what a lot of Somalis uh, tend to view. Yeah. Like when you get to university, you graduate. Yeah, you know, we've so gradu <laughs> you know, graduated at university. You know, he's done, you know. But that's just a stepping stone. Uh -huh. There's like at least 10 steps left for you to achieve what you want. Mm -hmm. I think also because um, the Somali people genuinely they try to push their kids to go to university to get a better education. Um, but actually a recent survey it suggested that 56% of recent graduates, when um, they applied for a job, they felt that the, they were better than under ca other candidates, mainly because they were more qualified. Do you think that has any... Th of the story aspect didn't come in. Mm -hmm. I wanted to take Somali um, pictures in mm -hmm. London. Mm -hmm. um, 
and later on it started to pick up so I thought let me put the, the input of the story so people mm -hmm. like will express the most deepest of story that they don't normally share mm -hmm. to people let alone online mm -hmm. so and that started to pick up and it started to go like you know it was like a demand kind of thing mm -hmm. so then I started taking photos of people mm -hmm. um, on a daily basis and then the international um, sort of stage came and people started to send me stories from around the world mm -hmm. um, but going back to the question I think it's really important to know how to use it properly mm -hmm. um, I'm not saying that there are people like a lot of people in so for example you know Facebook Twitter Instagram or mm -hmm. any of these platforms are not using it in a good way mm -hmm. but it it's it just it really just depends on what they share I mean it's at the end of the day it's your platform mm -hmm. you know it's your choice whatever you post you know even if it's something that's like something that you don't agree with mm -hmm. or something that you're like hey why did this person post this post like it's mm -hmm. wrong or whatever mm -hmm. it's their platform yeah. so you have to give that right to them mm -hmm. whatever it is whatever your disagreement so I think it's just it's really you know with regards to like what you post it's important mm -hmm. um, if you're posting something positive something that all people when they look back and they're like feeling inspired or in change their mindset of the day mm -hmm. of the week of the month or even mm -hmm. the year mm -hmm. then you know you've done your job on social media mm -hmm. and that's for me that's the whole concept of Samari Cyrus so that mm -hmm. the mindset can change mm -hmm. yeah uh, I, I think you know, Social media has helped a lot. Like you know, they, they, they've helped you know change regimes in the world. Yeah, the Tunisia uprising was partially due to the social media. Mm -hmm. Same thing that happened in Egypt was mm -hmm. partially due to social media. The problem with social media, however, is that when you say activism, when you post stuff on social media, mm -hmm. it takes away that responsibility of you putting in action. It kind of mm -hmm. gives you yeah, the credibility of saying, okay, I've done my part. Yeah, and I leave it to, to the rest of the world. And I think that's a very dangerous thing that could happen. Mm -hmm. Whereas activism before was something on the you know, like grassroots level. Mm -hmm. Now you sharing a post is, is, is almost the equivalent of you, you know, I've done this, I've helped, I've, I've actually put in effort. Mm -hmm. I think somehow we should really, I don't know why, 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 tuition, the basic stuff, you know, I don't know why, I don't know why, where should I go, online, I don't know school those things are really practical things and I think the way the world is moving with them that we are becoming more you know, glamorized with, with stuff that takes place online mm -hmm. where we're almost losing you know, the, the attachment or the relatability the to the human level mm -hmm. and I think that's a very dangerous distinction that can happen mm -hmm. when you talk about activism because you know um, social media as mm. in we'll see now that over the years it's yeah. become more and more popular. So some um, an English saying we have keyboard warriors. Mm. So ma tadam hi kuchhi na computer kwa wasi khoriyan. Like you see, in essence, into keyboard warriors kana kwa nhaian. Maybe in a bahana fiyan. Maybe in a event outside event in a semayan. In a dan yara da somali then a so kanan in a lahablan. Then essentially um, social media na kuchhi na. But of course, had you see a lot of dan yara or social media kuso badnada. Lo ha kesa that you have to one and they're already on Facebook and Instagram. So it has its ways, both ways it can be seen, but then as an effect really mukata, because Adi Wahasama Said underscore science terminologies. So maybe Kof online Kurachira or science chatlan or a Somali Hatakudahikan in science word yeah. Do you think maybe Wahasamani said is really effective in Ugaria than Yara the Somali that? Just before internet action, I was also not theorized in an in an in a lot of record. Or, there was a there was a research that came out of Cambridge. It was on the news where they found out a kid who spends four four hours more on screen is is more likely to drop two grades down compared to a kid who didn't spend the same amount of time. So. It is becoming an issue now. Um, of w most of these kids are going on social media. They have a smartphones where they can use Facebook, Twitter, mm -hmm. all the social medias. Mm -hmm. So that is one element that mm -hmm. I think the discussion also kind of have to include mm -hmm. when we um, talking about this social media point. Mm -hmm. The second point that you came to, of course, my way of 
delivering that Somali terminology is not going to be it's not going to be aimed at every single party on the social media. Mm. My aim and objective of the project is just that the Somali language is kind of dying out mm -hmm. and is dying out in the most important areas mm -hmm. like um, scientific r uh, research because at the end of the day if you want to communicate a particular idea to a Somali person that doesn't speak your language mm -hmm. then it becomes libachata social media English science terminology So I um, Somali um, in England um, does the education system does it really help um, maximize the potential of the Somali youth today for example than the other or high school course other than um, high school could really what make a button because high school all the other sahib yash other Allah sabah shala wa Allah hadla kasa so no kata guri ka asha on ta television ka for this ata wasah ta no rasha the impasse way and really like does it maximize potential kaza as in based on your experience I think called then as in Hakko Sabaratan in Greece, maybe the Dial College of Kabila and Mohammed Wakarana in no primary school Kusabarta. Did it help you really maximize your potential? Um, I want to talk about something in research England, right? Mm -hmm. um, I want to compare that to other nations. Mm -hmm. So if we're looking at, for example, mm -hmm. the Asian continent, mm -hmm. China and Japan, when you, when you focus on the aspect of their high school, the process mm -hmm. of how they, you know, get into, it's, it's more of a, like, the way that they, the reason why China is where it is today or mm -hmm. why the school system is one of the best yeah. in the world when it comes to technology mm -hmm. and when it comes to gaming mm -hmm. is because not only do people have interest of it, it's mm -hmm. like they get tested on a weekly mm -hmm. basis, constantly. It's like a routine. It's like they know, like, with, with what's amazing about them is like they have a like ritual like they do this mm -hmm. they do that they have a schedule to fulfill yeah. whereas if you look at the England like system mm -hmm. it's like it's like they focus on the high school or the school whatever it is so much mm -hmm. that they yes. forget to tell them hey do this at home mm -hmm. or do that at home or mm -hmm. do that at home whatever and I think that's what's declining in high school you know, sixth form college or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's because they don't they don't pressurize the kids to do stuff at mm -hmm. home, and I think that's that's very important. I slightly disagree with Mohammed. Some part of um, the Chinese um, compared to the UK. Mm -hmm. I mean, of course, I, I agree with Mohammed that our schools are failing because of the number of students per class per teacher mm -hmm. is is crazy. Mm -hmm. Even compared to China, China has got more students, but they're not disciplined as much. But also one thing we, we need to understand is that the kids in here, um, compared to the... Um, then, you know, or maybe acad academia, um, for example, yeah. they're not really focused on it. So maybe a different route, maybe, you know, it's not really going to university. Maybe they can um, get out of university. Maybe someone might be more gifted in sport or they, um, as in had the Yusoma Farah, he won the world championship. Mm. Someone could be inspired by that and then they can go on and do that sport. So instead of going for maybe a university or an apprenticeship, is there mm. a third way to maybe push to what you want to do? Well, there probably is. I think, I think there is. There is. There's always a third way. There's always another way. The mm -hmm. thing is, like, is the parents willing to take that risk? Mm -hmm. It all comes down to risk. Are you willing to, to, to take a risk on, you know, letting your kid follow their dream? And most parents, Somali parents, aren't. And I think I that's think. an important element that I think as Somali parents we need to let let the kids make as many mistakes as possible mm. before they're too old to make mistakes. So that mm. will be the only way you can learn in life even if you went to go if you, if you went to university. Mm. Yeah, as in of course that's maybe an essential part. Um, mm. 
But Somalia as they say we neither I will next another. So maybe as mm. you get older you get better. Mm. So for example it's not necessarily that for Haradon Kuma Mahalo Sahmaham he might Sahtah Kumaha. Like Mahum we neither who next I don't experience building at uh accumulate some in some can win at all. Of course like it may that I live together. So you can still recover from it. That's why you have to make as many mistakes as possible. I think what I was getting at is because, you know, they went through a lot of stuff. So, maybe I But essentially, you don't have that same life experience as So, what they're pushing towards is. Do you get so? Sometimes um, in your life goes somewhere, you do Of course, of course, at the same time, Halaya Abba and Musifa and Ufam, Waha, they got Kufi and Tam Hoida and Ufam, Sadat, a milk, Alan Berikas on the Unker in a Kupushkar and Otkash or Adona, they are at Shalita Natalia. What about you, Mahmoud? I then do you think maybe the mum and dad know what they're talking about most of the time, Mirke Kahadlian? Um, what field you should essentially go in, or do you think maybe you know then? Me again, <laughs> they don't know what they're talking about. So I came out of drama, I came out of high school, A level or somewhere. I know what I'm talking about. Let me go decide for myself. I mean, in my, I think with me, experience comes above qualifications. You know, parents they went through so much mm -hmm. pain. They went through so much in order for me to come to the UK. So I have to like, it's in my like sort of conscious to actually like listen to what they're saying mm -hmm. and like to follow what they're saying to some extent mm -hmm. but when it comes to like you know field and all that stuff you know it's you know the parents should like listen as well it has to be a two-way thing mm -hmm. they can't be like you know they input their thing and my opinion is out of the window mm -hmm. and what I say their opinion is out of the window mm -hmm. there has to be a two-way thing where we come to a compromise ha, that, that's an essential part as well because you know something or they essentially say you know um, so I need so I need because hopefully you can succeed in life yeah. so um, that two-way thing hata is something you know Somalia, the, and essentially it's not wow. Somalia, the Hatta, mm -hmm. it's the rest of the globe as well. Yeah. They think, of course, they, they've been through more life experiences, but then your input really doesn't matter at all. Because when you put an input in, we can hear, oh, Shari Tawan, Sana Jerum, Hekal, Hadla, as in, Ani Wakasaka, Haimem, how can he tell me what to do, for example? No, I, I think it's absolutely right. And yeah, I'm going to have to. What you guys talk about. Include them in the conversation. They understand your struggle. They understand what you've been going through. Like, I keep arrogant. That doesn't matter. Where do I family? This is above your level. It's too, it's too difficult. Mm -hmm. You push them away, and then suddenly you, you ask yourself, yeah, and when you see stuff on TV and, and stuff in the world, you, you kind of you know, dismiss your parents for thinking that they're not on the same level mm -hmm. that everyone else is on. Mm -hmm. So it's up to us to kind of connect that bond. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. At the same time, Sue Mohammed Shay had to call. Well, any wild cliff to a in So basically, I think we had this and um, Hoya, the Ea Abaha, Ea Unga, in a slower the Hadlan. So 
community so ودعوي اي هي اشك هي هي ما مختص so حق السمايا اي انه سو مرته هي انه سو مرته so essentially bond cast in the for career يعني ام second ام سؤال على بعد وضوها ام social media activism you know had to see but now that it's become more and more popular is it really effective does it really help somali the danyara the or even just Somali the general, does it really help? Was it better in Allah Sabaha? In our Bahla Samaya, instead of keyboard can I put it? Then I could have social media that Halaya Puff in Wahawi were a little bit of a malo in a marate, or mother at Katis, Eregaga, if a cratada, and a good piece. So, of course, while I let Fia, the Sylphian lost a malo. Like in Interbell, we had the other. شيء بمر وحاليا ترينينج إنه سمعنا يا أمر تويتر كسمعنا يا أمر إنستغرام أو قف كست أو مر كأي هذا كمدة وسكرعه. That is not a real activism. Activism هو أنا أعتقد إن دكاتر ما تو عاد وقت جاك قيب كمدة عاد كليسو كده من عاد كم مرة ده لسه وبعانتها. كلام مرة ده لنتي كم وقع أنت كرت تلاقي تويت أو تسميس تدح تويت أو تسميس أفر إنستغرام أو تقرت فيديو أو تكلس كم وقع أنت كرت مدح أنا درسين إنك وأنا تكتو أما أتقول ده إذا أنا practical at at the same time و information how to transfer information via social media لكن information كم مصمم فعل كل الرب فعل كو حاسم بالآدم مرجع بالآدم كي بعمل قنبل مودا information بس كل كتب بينه هبل هاي الدقيقة هبل هاي الدقيقة تو ما أردت أن أسكول ده ما أردت أن تويت كي as many retweets as possible in a hell of a Yeah, um, I think it's important to know how to use it. I mean, like, Somali Cyrus, for example, it started on Instagram. My first post mm -hmm. was on Instagram. Um, and initially, my idea was to just take photos of Somalis. It wasn't